Hey guys, Cork here again. So today I have a little video for you. I thought it might be fun uh, to do a little uh, messing around with my format. So today I'm going to be going through the three different levels of hunt hard play, or of hunter play, from hunter hunt hard up to pro. Uh, just as a disclaimer, it doesn't matter how well you play or what you do, you will be called a hunt hard. It's one of the classic insults of classic WoW. So I, I would just embrace it. And uh, one thing to remember is that when you're playing well and someone calls you a hunt hard, the people that you don't want calling you a hunt hard are the people that will call you a hunt hard for no reason. So keep in mind that the relationships and friendships you want to make are with the people that recognize you're not a hunt hard. So don't get caught up in, you know, shit fights and arguments with people that, you know, are not, you know, it's not really going to matter in the long term. So just keep that in mind. So the other thing I want to talk about is, you know, the hunt hard phrase, where does that come from? It's really simple, actually. The hunter class is destined to have this sort of connotation because of two reasons. Well, actually, just one reason. Hunt hards are the Mr. Bean of World of Warcraft. And what I mean by that is that because hunters have such a powerful toolkit and they're easy to level, it's very easy to play a hunter and sort of wander into all levels of content regardless of how skillful you are, how much experience you have. Um, now that's not a bad thing. Being ignorant is not particularly damaging. You know, no one should have a right to tell you how to play. But just like Mr. Bean, the reason that hunt hards are dreaded is because a lot of the things that you will do is directly in, in, impacting the quality of the game for other people. You know, Classic WoW is a social game. You can't do everything by yourself. And when you group up, Hunters have a predisposition for being a burden. And as we go through today's video, I'll kind of explain why, and you'll visually be able to see why playing a hunter poorly basically is a burden to everyone around you. So it's a, it's a double-sided sword here. You find your way into high-level content, and once you're there, if you're incompetent, you make life way harder for everybody else. And that's why the hunt hard is a thing. So the first level is hunt hard. That just means you're a burden to everyone around you. You know, I don't really care if you play WoW and you're not the best player. You know, it is what you make it. But people have a right to call you a hunt hard if you are making their experience worse. So up from a hunt hard, we have the capable hunter. Now, if you play classic WoW and you're a capable hunter, you are going to have a blast. You are going to have a ball. You're going to be able to level effectively. You're going to be able to be effective in the open world. You're going to be welcome and in demand for group content and PvP, you know, playing the baseline class well, because the Hunter is such a powerful class, you will be in demand. So don't feel like there's any pressure to be the best player. Um, in fact, it's encouraging because just simply being capable makes you um, desirable and you're gonna have a good time playing. Now the pro level, you know, I cannot claim to be the best Hunter in the world. And so many of these demonstrations can be taken a level further by you know some of the top players as always and i think that's what make what makes classic wow such an excellent game because there's always another level of mastery there's always something you can be practicing so if many of these the pro demonstrations you don't you're confused by or you don't understand i would encourage you to check out other class resources i have a guide here i have a series here on youtube detailing and documenting some of the core mechanics and the purpose of this is to show you what's possible but to also encourage you to go out and make the hunter class your own and you know push the pro level even further so again the, i love the hunter class because simply being capable makes you desirable but there's always space for improvement and you know i personally find that very satisfying getting that mastery and hopefully you will too so enjoy the video the noob hunter will leave their pet on aggressive stance and growl on autocast so that it continually pulls mobs without any control. And with Growl and Auto Cast, your entire group will be fighting for aggro. The Capable Hunter will leave their pet on defensive stance so it only responds when you're under attack and turn off Auto Cast on Growl, on growl while in the group. And this way, if you do accidentally pull, your pet will defend you. Your pet will defend you, and the tank can then uh, acquire aggro easily without having to fight for your pet with aggro. 
The pro hunter will always have their pet on passive stance to give you the most control at any time because your pet will only follow orders that you command uh, directly. The pro hunter will also have growl bound to autocast. And the, the reason that you would want to use growl in dungeons is to uh, soak on large pools. You can use your pet as a second tank, as an off tank on some mob, or you can use growl to pick up uh, ads on your healer or other party members of your group. And one of the best, some of the best hunter plays I've ever seen is hunters that use their pets effectively to control the pace of the dungeon and uh, act as a soak when things get hairy. And your healers will love you for being able to do this. The noob hunter will try to get around things without dismissing their pet and end up chain pulling mobs, potentially wiping your entire group and leaving you confused as to what happened. A hunt hard will jump off a ledge without dismissing their pet, leaving your pet to path all the way down and pulling any mobs that it comes across and potentially wiping your group. The capable hunter will dismiss their pet before trying to get around mobs. The capable hunter will dismiss their pet before jumping. Your pet always wants to stay to the left of you, and it will continually readjust to stay there. But the pro hunter will manipulate mob pathing by running face forward into an obstacle, getting your mob to path on top of you and strafing left, keeping your mob directly behind you. Show that again just so you have a clear understanding of what I mean. Your pet wants to stay to the left of you, but if I run into a wall, my pet will appear on top of me and then I can just follow the wall. And I'll show that in the other direction as well. So my pet's to the left of me, but if I run into the wall and strafe, he's following behind me because he's trying to get to the left of me. The pro hunter will use Eyes of the Beast to jump with their pet, stay, and then themselves jump off. The noob hunter will show up to dungeons without enough ammo and be reduced to just a melee, a melee bot, a shitty version of a warrior. The capable hunter will arrive fully stocked and prepared for a long run. And one of the worst things that can happen is during a long run where you're viciously fighting to finish the last leg you end up running out of ammo. The pro hunter will take engineering and craft their own ammunition. Or alternatively, farm Doom Shot from LBRS, which I would not personally recommend. In fact, please don't try to farm Doom Shot from LBRS. The Huntard will actually pull with their pet or themselves and feign death instantly and watch their entire party die without helping. The capable hunter will use feign death in combat to reset aggro or avoid abilities and will save, to save feign death until there's no hope left for the group and the group's already wiping. I see too often hunters feign deathing too early because they think all oh, hope is lost. But any extra ad or mob you can kill while your group's wiping will help you the next time around. So feign death can be used as a get out of jail free card, but only if all hope is lost and everyone else in your group is dead. So don't feign death too early because you're just letting your, uh, you're losing an opportunity to clear when you wouldn't die anyway. The pro hunter will use feign death in combat to reset threat so that they can continue pumping out full damage. This makes you unique as a ranged DPS class because you can essentially wipe your entire aggro table and so you can manage your threat while pumping out the most maximal DPS. They will also use it in combat to swap trinkets. 
Because Feign Death sets you, puts you out of combat, you can use a macro to instantly swap trinkets, so you can pop active trinkets. DPS to the maximum, Feign Death to reset aggro, equip new trinkets, and then continue DPSing. The Pro Hunter will also use Feign Death after a wipe, or during a wipe I should say, and use Goblin Jumper Cables to revive the healer. The Huntard will bunk up a Freezing Trap. And then claim it resisted. The Capable Hunter will reliably hit their trap target, their mark target. And more importantly, be honest when you mess it up or if it resists. The Pro Hunter will be able to reliably trap two targets in any given pool. And more importantly, effectively communicate which targets they intend to trap. Be honest about when you mess it up and be able to trap on the fly if, it, if your healer picks up an ad. The Huntard will continually spam Arcane Shot with no regard to their auto shot timer or rotation. The Capable Hunter will use their casted abilities such as Aim Shot and Multi Shot during the cooldown of their auto shot in order to avoid clipping. The Pro Hunter will use an Auto Shot Timer and a Melee Swing Timer in order to use melee abilities when other range abilities are no longer available. Huntard rolls need on every item that they can equip without understanding how the stats influence their character or without even considering if it's an upgrade or not. Now the least harmful this does, the least harmful outcome is that you just simply confuse the rest of your party and you get a reputation for not knowing what you're doing. But the worst case is you're going to be ninja looting upgrades away from other players. And this really can harm your reputation and if you piss off the wrong people you can get a server wide reputation for being a Huntard. The Capable Hunter understands what items are upgrades, he understands how stats influence his character, and more importantly, he knows how to defend himself against other people um, criticizing his gearing choices. As a Hunter, you should be able to defend whatever item you roll need on, and you're going to get a lot of hate from people who feel like they're more deserving of an item than you. Uh, the best advice I have is stand your ground and know your shit. The Pro Hunter, now I'm going to kind of talk about this for a little while because this is very important in Classic WoW. The Pro Hunter knows when it's appropriate, and not just appropriate, knows when it's advantageous to pass on loot to other players. And the reason this is important is because Hunters can level and gear with the bare minimum. Because you have a pet, because you arrange DPS with basically a tank built in, you can get by a lot easier without getting gear upgrades, especially on your path to 60. I'm not saying that you should always pass on gear. What I am saying is that it is advantageous in certain situations to pass it on. Because in, in Classic WoW, your reputation matters. And one of the best way to make, one of the best way to make friends and get a good reputation is by uh, recognizing when it's appropriate. Now, of course, Dal Dalrin's set is pre-BIS. But once Dire Maul releases, you can upgrade to Barbarous Blade, which is not which is not like an appropriate item for a hunter or for a warrior or a rogue to roll on. 
And so by, and so I just want you to ask yourself, you know, this is not about being charitable or, you know, sacrificing anything. If you pass on an item that is not really going to make that much of a difference, and as a result of doing that, you make friendships and you make uh, companionship with other people in your party, in the end, that is going to matter more than just a simple item upgrade. So the pro hunter knows when it's appropriate and advantageous to pass on certain loot. Still, you should be able to defend yourself if you roll need, and I'm not saying you should always pass, but in the long run, it might be advantageous to pass on certain loot. The hunt art will flame party members, get dragged into unnecessary drama and shit fights, and abandon the group in the middle of a dungeon run. Capable Hunter will communicate factually and maturely and own up to their mistakes. The Pro Hunter goes to low level zones and pays people to shit talk others for them. Um, remember, if there's anything that you saw in this video that is confusing or you haven't been exposed to before, I recommend checking out my series on uh, on this YouTube channel. It's a, also on a playlist, so if you see something you don't quite understand, I would recommend checking that out. Uh, the classic WoW uh, Reddit has a lot of resources. There's a post by user Cosmology who has basically compiled all the resources for every class and general information as well. Uh, I encourage you to check out the Hunter Class Discord, of course. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to continue my Hunter Core Mechanics series. I'm um, not exactly sure on the timeline on that, but check back. Uh, subscribe if you want notifications about that. Um, if you want to see more, just please subscribe. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.